else. This will probably be a relatively quick video. Um, I have a hyper tough Walmart can customer return push more. It seems like we've got a whole myriad of issues that I'm covering in some videos just because um, I figured that you all could, uh, that people could use the assistance and just trying to diagnose, especially just these ch uh, cheap push mowers, but also they have the 300E Briggs on them, which is basically what you're going to find on any consumer grade push mower, some form of this engine. Um, and this goes anywhere between the 300 e and all the way up to like the 725, this, this uh, problem. When I took this mower out, I'll describe the symptoms to you since I've already got it on the bench here. Um, tried to start it, sprayed um, starter fluid in it because it wouldn't run on uh, just gas. And um, what it was doing is it was actually like it seemed like it was popping and I had like puffs of smoke coming out of both ends here it would not start it would just try and hit once and then you'd see like a like a puff of smoke shoot out puff of smoke shoot out that way um, it wasn't given the head gasket symptoms of a bad head gasket so I didn't know if it was water in the fuel and so I covered that by um, taking out the carburetor and I've got that in a previous video about how to um, see if you have bad fuel or um, how to just do a quick clean on it. The fuel looks good on good in there, smells good. So it led me to believe that it's a flywheel key issue. Which, spoiler alert, that's what it is. I'm going to show you how to change it. Um, very easy to do. And like I said, this goes for the 300E all the way up to probably the 725E. It's not really that much different between the engines. But you have three 5 16 inch bolts here that hold the cover on. You get a um, either a ratchet and socket, or you can get one of these hand crank um, sockets. And uh, you just pull this off. And then you have two options after that. The first one, the best option is to get a 15 16 inch impact socket or just a socket in general and an impact and just loosen it that way that's the easy way to do it the other way to do it is to find something that will give you the blade stop tool and also another indication that if you get a mower and the flywheel key might be bad is if you hit something and you see the blade bent kind of like this one um, I have it on the bench so I can't really turn it but you can see that the blade is bent up right there um, indicating that it likely hit something pretty hard um, and shearing the flywheel key is kind of a fail safe so that it doesn't blow the engine um, but the other way is just to find something to actually hold the blade from turning and hold the crankshaft from turning and then just grab like a half inch um, ratchet with the socket and just turn it off that way um, both ways are very viable I've already loosened this one up so I'm going to go ahead and take it off this gives you access to the flywheel key. It's really easy to get to on these mowers, which I'm happy um, that it is. And I'll show you all the deal with it. If you saw my mower rejects video, this one made a cameo appearance. But here's where your flywheel key is supposed to be. And you can see that one half of the key is right here and one half of the key is over here, actually 180 degrees away. Another symptom of a possible bad flywheel key would be if you pulled the rope, it's just the way that this one sheared, it didn't shear kind of like 90 degrees over or 45 degrees over. When you pull the rope and you have gas in it, it actually will basically rip the rope right out of your hand and it's actually kind of dangerous. So if you see that happening, this is likely what's going on with the flywheel key. So I've got it here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab something to um, hold this back, your blade brake. And as a failsafe, you can take your spark plug and stuff out, but it's not going to fire and run on a sheared flywheel key most of the time, unless it's just partially sheared. So I'm going to grab that. That'll give the blade brake some room. And then I'm going to um, find a method to get 
the flywheel key off, which if you want to give your flywheel a little bit of extra um, encouragement, you just spray some lubricant or PB blast or whatever you have there to kind of make less friction on the flywheel because we're going to have to literally pop it off here. So let me grab my third hand, so to speak, get this blade break back. I'm going to grab me a flathead screwdriver and a hammer, and we're going to get this off. Okay, so I have the blade break pulled back now. And with the way that this shroud is, or the mounting plate for the um, pull rope mechanism is, it's a little bit difficult to find a good spot to pry up on it. Um, but let's see what we can find. Usually, I got this big screwdriver here. Usually, I think I like going right here with it, and I'll just pull up right there on it. Have to be really careful, actually. <laughs> of course, this is going to go easy, at least for the purposes of the video. Um, so I was able to just pull up on it like this, and it's able to come off. Now, most of the time. Because I, I've watched YouTube videos and I learned how to replace a flywheel. Most of the time it is not that easy. So do not expect it to be that easy. A lot of times you will need one of two things. So the flywheel will just sit on here. I don't know if I can put it back down the way that it is. But the flywheel will sit on here. You'll either need some sort of hammer. And you'll have to hit on top of the crankshaft. Which you have to be really careful about. I know a lot of people don't have air tools at home unless you're a shop and already kind of know how to do this. Um, but if you can get it off with a rubber hammer, that's the best way to do it. Sometimes you might have to increase your um, hitting power and get a regular hammer or um, something of that nature. Be really, really careful if you do that because I'll go ahead and take the this off. <clears throat> Be really, really careful if you do that because you don't want to um, compromise the shaft up here on the top or like start bending, because this shaft is really soft, bending threads and whatnot, not being able to get the nut back on. So if you see that you're really starting to mess up things, um, just make sure that you're not doing that. Um, that you compromise the threads too much. I have to get a magnet to get that down, to get that back out. It looks like because it fell right down in there, uh, or a screwdriver. So that that's how you get it off. I mean, it don't take as long as it works. Well, it's down under there now, so I ain't gonna worry about it. Uh, I mean, you can do this in less than ten minutes. It's just taking me a little longer because I'm filming it. So let me find my replacement flywheel keys, and they, they don't cost very much. And uh, we'll go ahead and put this back in, put the flywheel on, and then kind of just tap the flywheel key in and get this thing running. Okay, so I have the flywheel back on. I have put it in the um, correct area where it is supposed to be. And I'm just going to take this flywheel key. It's actually... I mean, you probably see that it's got some use on it. This is actually a used one. I wanted to use this one because the new ones I got, I think, are steel keys. And um, I have just hijacked this one off of a mower with a blown engine. It works great as it is. Um, you just slide it in there like so. And that gives you, you're going to have a little bit of play in it. Uh, that's the way that the flywheel key is designed to have a little bit of play in it. So that you can, uh, so that if it shears, it's gonna, you know, shear off and not freeze up and then like spin something in the motor or anything like that. So if you see, you have a little bit of play in it. That's actually quite a bit of play, but um, once you put the um, nut back on for the flywheel cup and all that, then that's it's kind of what helps hold it on a little bit better. So if you see a little bit of play like that, don't be alarmed. It's kind of the way that it's supposed to be for the purposes of keeping the engine safe if you hit something really hard like a 
pole or a stump or anything like that, which I don't recommend you doing, hitting strong things um, like that. We'll put this back on. What actually would help now would be for me to take this off. And again, as a safeguard, you can just pull that spark plug boot. good impact and get it just nice and tight there and that'll that'll be what you need to do i think there's a specific foot pound that you need to do but um if it's tight it ain't gonna go nowhere and you don't want to make it so tight that you actually strip the threads in the flywheel uh, or in the crankshaft excuse me so now we'll put these three things on And what I'll go ahead, since this video is relatively short in terms of the videos that I make, I'll go ahead and um, we'll replace the blade on camera as well. So, let's see. I have a 20-inch uh, blade on a blown up push more just like this so I'll take it off of that and put it on it and you can find like a mini impact for this you just have to be careful because these threads are fine threads so you don't want to strip them out and they only need to be hand tight for the um, pull rope mechanism so that's that I'll grab that out of there so it doesn't burn up there's the old flywheel key we'll toss in the trash. Let me get the, uh, let me get an old, or excuse me, let me get a new blade. I might have to check in my blade cabinet here, um, or I'll get one off of the other one. Just one that'll fit, a good 20 inch one. And hopefully we'll get this thing running for y'all, because you know I like to end my videos on a, a running lawnmower, <laughs> if you watch. Alright, so I got the mower turned exhaust side down again for safety purposes. If you want to take out the spark plug boot just to make 100% sure this thing don't start on you um, you can do that but I'm gonna take the uh, this one here you're either gonna have a 9 16 or a 5 8 bolt um, this one's a 9 16 because it's one of that kind of the AYP brand ones not an MTD one uh, the MTD ones are mostly 5 8 because they have a little bit different blade and a little bit different design on them Okay, so if you can see, that is what happened to the blade. So that's the straight end, that's the screwed up end. And so this one actually is good to go into the... Uh, scrap metal prices are basically nothing, so I just chuck them in the trash. Let me get the other blade and we'll put it on and I'm going to grab the screwdriver and clean up some under the deck there too. Because again, I wash these off and I market them. I don't market them as new mowers, but I market them as mowers that have only been used maybe once or twice within the 90 day Walmart return policy. So I try and make them look halfway decent. Because, you know, I want them to fetch a good 80, 90 dollars like a get out of these um, in the spring give people good mowers and save them a few bucks and save them the assembly cost too you know so I'm just gonna scrape some more of this off I'm gonna get the blade off of the other mower that's uh, got the blown engine on it and then we'll continue with this and um, just kind of finish it up. 
All right, so I have the new blade on, about to tighten it up. This one's got some rust on it, but it is still sharp. Um, probably just found some weather or some corrosion or something somewhere. Um, but again, very sharp. Still plenty of good life left in it. Barely even used, it just lived a little bit of a hard life. We hit the impact. I don't have the impact socket on, but I'm gonna just run it in there. And torque it down with the ratchet. And that's one that you want to have tight because you don't want to have that thing flying off or anything like that while you're cutting grass or the like. So. Take the blade tool off. What I'll do is I'll, I'll clean up a little bit, get this mower back in in there, and uh, actually take the blade key off of that because I'm going to be working on that. You will see uh, me working on this one in a future video. I'll get this one turned over, put the air filter and stuff back on, and I'll give you all a test run. All right, so we got it over here and you can see, I want to give you all one other hint. So you can see there was like some oil caked up over here. A lot of times that might mean that it's been used kind of hard and that the motor was working pretty good and uh, just expending a little bit of oil at the while it was at it. It would actually would not surprise me if this mower ran with the flywheel key in the way that it was turned 180 degrees. Um, and if that was the case, it was probably shooting oil and stuff out and just, just a bunch of junk. So that's kind of another indication if you get a mower like that. So let's see. This thing should run. So let me see if I can end y'all, end this with a running video, running mower for y'all.